What's up, Avalanche fans? Uh, I'm back here again with another Central Division preview for the 2017-18 NHL upcoming season. First off, I'd just like to say last season was one of the worst seasons in NHL history for one of the call for one of the in history of the NHL for a team. And I want to thank everyone for recent recent love and support on my videos. It means a heck of a whole lot. And uh, let me know what you do next. Last season, like I said, was the worst, and everything just snowballed out of control for them. Ha! Huh, you see it there? Snowball avalanche. After their top four, there isn't a ton of depth, and the team just doesn't have good enough depth to compete, in my opinion. I really don't know why there is a whole bunch of Tyson Berry trade rumors, because if you guys, if the Avalanche trade out Tyson Berry. You had to get their top four defensemen back, but no one wants to give up a top four defenseman. So it's ridiculous the trade rumors for Tyson Berry. They're just ludicrous. Right now, I wouldn't be remiss to say this is, might be the worst defense in the hockey right now in the league. And I'll let you know why further down the road. I don't know if Varlamov is going to have a bounce back year with all the health problems he had. The Avs have pieces for a rebuild, and the first step they need to take for me is firing Joe Sackick and getting a new GM and trying to fix this landslide. I really think they're going to have a, if, may have a as bad, if not worse, of a season than they did last year. If you trade to Shane, you can't get enough back to even make this team really competitive, in my opinion. <clears throat> in my opinion, they need, to, they need to go through a retooling. Excuse me. Because some of the pieces they have are good. They're not a horrible team. They have good pieces. They just need the right management and the coaching staff. And just a little bit of moves here and there, in my opinion. The blue line and goaltending, I just have so many question marks about. And you need to try and figure out how to fix this. I really think Matt Duchesne needs to change, change his scenery. I can't even fathom what is going on through his head every day reading where he will he get traded to. He just needs to get out of Col he just needs to get out of Colorado and he needs a reset and he can be a heck of a second line center on another team. Now let's take a look at our roster that is snowballing out of control. You have to get more than forty eight points in 82 games. That's just unacceptable for any team. Las Vegas, hell even, Las Vegas might do better than the Avalanche this year. If you get beat by an expansion in your first year, you know you have some serious problems. Your captain is Gabriel Landeskog. I don't like him as your captain. I never really liked him as a leader in the locker room. I wouldn't be opposed to seeing him get his captaincy strip and just have a bunch of alternate captains, but Landeskog has yet to reach the ceiling when he was drafted. Last year, everyone in the Avalanche had a dad in and he only scored 18 goals and 15 assists. <clears throat> 18 goals from your captain isn't good enough. This team is in shambles. I like the play that Nathan McKinnon brings to this team. I've always liked him ever since he was drafted. I think he might rack up a lot of the assists this year playing with a guy like Miko. And last year, McKinnon scored 16 goals, 37 assists for 53 points. That also isn't good enough from your first line center. And it's frustrating because we see what players like him are capable of, but they are not achieving what we know they can be. And in the NHL, he could be a consistent 78 point, 70 to 80 point player. <clears throat> I'm a really big fan of Miko Rantanen, and I love the pure goal scoring pure goal scoring ability he brings to this team and last year he scored 20 goals and 18 assists and with his killer speed and great hands I would like to see him get 25 to 30 goals this year and that'd be a great season for a kid who by the way did I mention he's only 20 <clears throat> on July 1st 2017 the Avs traded a 2019 fourth round pick for Colin Wilson yep the guy who's overpaid he's an overpaid third liner that dude 
you give they didn't give up a lot for a top six word and Colin is alright. He brings size and grit into this top six and can score somewhere in the range of 15 and 20 goals. He has scored 20 goals before, so I, it would be nice to see him get it again. Like I previously stated, I feel bad for Matthew Shane. Because all the trade rumors, and I just really think he doesn't want to be in Colorado. You see him out there, and I just think he's just logging the days until he gets traded. The sooner it happens, the better for Matthew Shane. Joe Sack, you're crazy. You can get like two firsts and a prospect back for Matthew Shane. You're overvaluing him way too much. And he's a great player. And just Joe Sackick, like I said, overvaluing him. Last year, he had 18 goals and 23 assists. A down year. But everyone in that bunch had a down year. And he's a fast player that can score. But like I just said, he needs a change in scenery. Then you, uh... The Avalanche have a good top nine forward, but not someone you want in your top six, and Joe Colborn. And he plays a really solid 2A game, and he is capable of 10 to 15 goals. Last year, he had four goals and four assists, and just flat out didn't play well at all last season. Now we move on to a decent 2 way playing second line, or third line. And it starts with Blake Como, and he plays a solid 2 way game, and he's good on the PK. And he's a solid player that is capable of 10 to 15 goals. Last year he scored 8 goals and 12 assists. And I believe he gets somewhere in that range again this year. Now your third line center is a really overpaid third line center in Carl Soderberg. And I believe he is capable of 5 to 10 goals. Last season he had 6 goals and 8 assists in 80 games. <clears throat> and he probably scores around the team this year. And he brings good defensive play to this team. The Avalanche signed Neil Yakupov out of St. Louis and believe his career can be re revived and get back to 20 goals. And I don't know if that could happen. He was supposed to be this great sniper and never reached all the hype when he was drafted. He might get 10 to 15 goals this year. Then the fourth line is a big wild card because I don't know what to expect out of them. The first forward on the line is Matt Nieto, who is a decent two-way forward. And last year he had 7 goals and 4 assists. And I believe he would get around the same totals this year. I loved watching Tyson Jost at the 2016 World Juniors for Team Canada. And he looked like a dominant player out there for them. And I really liked the upside to his game. And last year he scored 16 goals and 19 assists. I think his rookie season will probably get 10-15 goals somewhere in that range. That was for... Uh, I'm pretty sure University of North Dakota where he got those totals. Then the last word on the abs is a player I'm really excited about is JT Comfer and I like the play and he's a solid playmaker who last year in the HL scored 13 goals and 17 assists for 30 points in 40 games. Not bad for getting used to the North American style of AHL play. And I think his rookie season, he probably gets around the same points, as to my opinion. <clears throat> now we move on to one of the not-so-greatest defenses in hockey. I like the top two in the Avalanche, but after that, their depth just falls off a cliff. Their first defenseman I'm really a fan of is Nikita Zdorov. <coughs> <coughs> he is a really physical defenseman. He reminds me of Rat Rasmus Ristolainen from Buffalo right now. Right now, Zadorov and the Avs are still in contract negotiations. But my my gut feeling is that he might go to the KHL. I like how physical he is at 6'5", 230. He's a big body with good skating and is a puck-moving D-man. If Colorado loses him, this officially becomes the worst defense in hockey right now. Last year he scored 10 assists. I believe he might score 5 goals and 5 to 10 assists. I think he can reach that. If Joe Sakic doesn't sign the key to the Zorov, this defense is looks horrible. I mean, completely horrendous. Oh. Then he's paired with a pretty good two-way defenseman and Eric Johnson, who is another big partner 
and he's 6'4", 225. Last year, he played 46 games and scored 2 goals and 15 assists, and he is good on the power play and good on, and can play good on the PK. Here is where death becomes a concern. In my opinion, you have Mark Rivero, who is your third defenseman when he is at best a 6th 7th D-man, and he's just an all-around average player. Last year he played 34 games for the Habs and scored 2 goals and 7 assists, and that's around where he'll get this year. I love the offense Tyson Berry brings to this team, and he's great in the power play and on the PK. Like last year, last year like everyone else on the Abs, he had a down year. He scored 7 goals and 31 assists. I believe he can get around 10 goals and 35 assists this year because he's that good in offensive defense. And may I say again, this is where your death falls up big time. Your fifth defenseman is Anton Lindholm, who last year in the AHL, in 62 games, he scored 2 goals and 11 assists. I really don't know what kind of scoring he's going to bring to this team. He has a big wild card. Then your last defenseman is David Warsawski, who is at best, best a 7th D-man, and last year he scored in 58 games. He scored 16 goals and 31 assists for the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Grant and Penguins. Now we move on to a huge question mark for me on this team. I know that Semyon Varlama was hurt last season, but let's face the fact as fans. He has not been a top goalie in quite some time. He isn't the same goalie when he was with Washington quite a few years back. Last year he had an 8, 8.98 save percentage and a 3.38 GA. And Caro needs to move on from Volomov and play Pickard. But, uh, yeah, right, I forgot. Colorado's GM, Joe Sackick, is stupid and decided to leave him unprotected. Now Colorado is even more screwed because they don't have Pickard because he's playing in Vegas. Joe Sackett needs to be gone from Colorado, and now the best goalie in your pipeline is Spencer Martin. And now your backup you got from Anaheim is Bernier, and I like what he brings to the team. The table is a backup. If someone gets hurt, you can rely on him to play some decent goaltending. Last year in Anaheim, he had 915 save percentage and 2.50 goals against. And he might even during the season take over a starting job from Varlamov. That's just my honest opinions, as fans. Don't get mad at me. I'm just saying what I think and feel from the roster. So, thank you all for watching. Make sure you hit like and subscribe and hit the notification bell and comment down below what team I should do next. So, other than that, I'm out. See you guys.